artificial intelligence has caused a lot of debate recently. Tesla CEO Elon Musk and Apple co-founder Steve Wozniak have called for a pause on technology that can compete with human-level intelligence. But others have come out in defense of new technologies, saying they can in fact replace mundane tasks and operate at a fraction of the cost. But what does this technology race mean for a country such as ours, South Africa, which already suffers from high levels of unemployment and a severe digital divide? For a look at the local context, then I'm joined by Apollo Studio CEO, Philem Ho, who's with me in studio. Very good evening, sir. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you um, for having me. First things first, is AI really taking over the workplace? Um, I think AI is certainly very topical at the moment, um, and especially with explosion chat GPT. Uh, I can tell you that some of the things that we've managed to do with ChatGPT has really, truly been astounding. S things that would take us, before ChatGPT, six weeks, two, three hours. Okay, so there's no doubt that there's going to be a profound effect um, on the workplace, um, you know, with tools such as artificial intelligence and automation. So the answer is yes. It, mm -hmm. There's lots of things going on. Um, and it will have a huge impact. And I think the impact we're not going to really be aware of just yet. And for the longest time when we looked at early levels of exploration around um, AI and artificial intelligence, people thought these were just nice robots that you could use to perform mundane tasks. But now, with it moving into the workplace, there's a nervousness about a rapid um, reduction in human staff. But some are saying it's not actually going to be that easy because even though these are highly intelligent, uh, pieces of well, equipment basically machines, right? Yeah, they aren't quite at the level yet where we can fully say they're going to take over. Well, there's automation, uh, which is physical automation, and then there is uh, sort of software automation. Um, so, I think from the physical automation side, you see a lot of things in, in farming, you know, a lot of these things have been automated. Um, on, the, on the software side, um, you know, we are using automation to really look at uh, replacing new name tasks. Um, some of it has a component of artificial intelligence, some of it doesn't. Um, you know, for Apollo, we, we actually use a, um, we use, and we help companies along their automation journey uh, with something called robotic process automation. And it sounds like robots, but it's actually just code, okay? Mm -hmm. So, uh, and this code kind of mimics what people can do. Uh, and, and really, uh, it's built for handling mundane, repetitive tasks that, to be honest with you, no human should really do. Um, a lot of data capturing, a lot of data transfers, um, really mundane stuff. Um, we are helping the workplace sort of automate those things now. Um, you know, so, um, yes, I would say um, there is a component where it will do the human's job, but Really, these are kind of jobs that um, I don't think any of us have fun doing. But in uh, South Africa, these are jobs that people need. These are jobs that people need in terms of data capturing. Absolutely, right? Um, but what we've seen uh, when we speak to, speak to companies, um, and, and it really is something like taking a spreadsheet, capturing it to a computer, going from one system, capturing it to another system, triple capturing it. Um, you know, I, I think that people uh, and certainly, um, you know, companies would be much better off if their human capital was spent on creative things, things uh, on customer service, um, things in terms of engaging with the customer, mm -hmm. things that you're actually thinking, you know, you're, you're excited to do rather than capturing things on a spreadsheet. But to do that and do it properly, workplaces would have to re Reskill or upskill right. their workers, right. correct? I think that's the key, right? I think um, certainly in a place like South Africa where uh, unemployment, we all understand, is a huge problem, uh, there is an obligation by the employer uh, as they're trying to get efficiencies, um, and automation can be a part of that, to really upskill the worker. And I think that speaks to lots of things in South Africa, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, we really do need to upskill uh, sort of the uh, employee base here to make this a more competitive economy. And from your observations, which sectors are taking to AI fastest yeah. at the moment in our context? Right. So, so, so there's AI and there's automation, right? So automation is, 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 is um, kind of doing the mundane, repetitive tasks, and AI's component of, of, of software, which, which is artificial intelligence. And sometimes you 
build automation with a bit of AI that kind of drives decision making. Uh, but I would say it's kind of there in most kind of companies these days. I mean, when you talk to a little chatbot, um, there's a component of the AI that's driving that now. Are right? we ready for a chatbot to sit in my chair? I hope not. I, I hope not. Um, and I don't think a chatbot will certainly have your charm. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I bet you say that to all uh, the chatbots. Yes, yes, yes. Um, but certainly, you know, these technologies are really kind of uh, expanding at a pace that is, I think, even six months ago would have been unfathomable. So, and you've got countries that are, are wary yes, of this sort of technology. Yes, yes. Uh, Bands, I mean, when yes, uh, ChatGPT people were saying, yes. um, are we not going to risky terrain here where people will basically take the work of a chatbot, of ChatGPT, and then pass it on as their own? Um, I think it was Italy that I was just told it's about, a, yeah, where yeah. they've in fact banned this sort of um, equipment. Sort yes, of yes, yes. Technology, and excuse me. Yeah, I, I, I think that. I think the human race has a responsibility. We, we, we've all seen the movie Terminator. Um, I don't know if you've seen it, with, mm -hmm. um, you know, where sort of artificial intelligence takes over the world. Um, I think that's a hyperbole, but certainly there needs to be responsibility around uh, how we use this, this technology. Um, you know, students are able to write essays using ChatGPT now. You can really write some amazing essays. You can solve for math equations. You can code. Um, you can do a lot of things, uh, and, and one of the scariest things I read was that the creators of ChatGPT, they don't know how it's doing some of the stuff that it's doing. See, this is the thing. Uh, once you've created this sort of technology, um, what are the limits, ethically and legally, right? right? And right. if you, like you're saying, um, even the inventors are surprised at what it's able to do, the creators are surprised, where does that leave the rest of us who unnecessarily mm. experts, but you're left with a device, um, an app that right. you now can use, but don't know how far you can go within the bounds of the law, even in some cases. Yeah, I, I think there's a lot of investigation and, and, and a lot of sort of um, discussions to be had around that. Um, there is, uh, like you said, there's a moral obligation, there's an ethical obligation um, ar around these technologies. Mm -hmm. And it, it was quite interesting to note that a lot of the amazing sort of futurists and technologists like Elon and, 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 and these guys have come out and said we should ban the development or, uh, or we should have a six-month period where we really kind of examine what sort of parameters we put around the use of these new technologies. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean, a very topical and very heavy discussions, I think. Ben Hope, good to speak to you so much. Thanks so much for coming in today.